All right, guys, we wanted to start a new series for Nadia's Prep. And uh, what we really wanted to do here is just kind of give you guys the ins and outs of, of everything that we're doing, um, the reason why we're doing what we're doing, and then also just my thought process, my decision-making process, and then also on Nadia's side, um, where she's at mentally, where she's at physically, what biofeedback markers that she's giving me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to basically document this from this point. It's Monday, uh, Labor Day. We're going to document this from this point forward. What I want to do first is get you guys caught up to speed. So Nadia is going to do that, and I'm going to kind of interject where I feel needed. And we really just want this to be a valuable learning tool and then also something really cool that as you guys can see her going up to the stage, like you're really, really a part of the process, understanding the process, and then also just understanding the bigger picture of why we're doing what we're doing and then how you can apply that to yourself. Because what I want you guys to see here is, not so much exactly what Naughty is doing, but the decision-making process, what variables we're considering, and then we'll go from there. All right, cool. So yeah, I've been prepping for, I think like six weeks now. Um, at first I felt like maybe I was spinning my wheels a bit, wasn't getting anywhere very fast. I know we were trying to figure out where to put food, where to put cardio, um, considering we never pulled any cardio out. Um, and my food never got super high for me um, and just getting my body to a place where we could kind of maintain something for a period of time, I remember, was even a little bit of a struggle for us from dieting for the majority of the year previously. Um, but now I feel like in the past three, four weeks, like we've made consistent changes every single week and I've made um, not necessarily consistent drops on the scale, but physique changes that I've noticed uh, week to week have been pretty drastic. And it, a lot of times, um, I don't necessarily have to drop weight to look different. Um, a lot of my changes come to the eye more than on just the scale. So that's right. an important indicator for me. That's why I like to take progress pictures and use my check-ins, um, as a tool more than I like to use the scale. I still weigh myself every day. Like we talked about just as a statistic, just to see, um, how things are going, because a lot of times my sleep, um, my workouts, like when I do my hit, all that stuff uh, plays a matter into where my weight is the next day. So I, yeah. I think that we've made good progress over the past few weeks, especially. Yeah. So just to, to give you guys some insight into um, my perspective of where Nadia was at. So there was, a, there was a lot going on when we first started. There was a, there was a big emotional, like kind of roller coaster because she was essentially ready for a show, you know, and the show was canceled. Um, and then it was that, you know, my thought process of, okay, we got to get her out of this show period. So that way she can still be responsive for the rest of the year. But within doing that, we had just started working together. So I needed to like really, really monitor and be cautious with her because her body was in a fragile spot. Um, I was also trying to kind of like reinstall some just living life moments, you know, giving her some meals out. But within that, we saw that her body wasn't really accepting to those as well as what I had hoped. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of my coaching early on with her was more so just like really just mentally being there for her and then kind of giving her my insight to, to where we needed to be. Um, my goal with her, and this is really starting to happen already, is for her to be able to have a higher intake of food and be able to utilize food better in every season, in the off season, during a prep, um, because like the girl, you know, you girls that are watching this, you girls that are listening to this, the reason why girls rise up to the sport so fast and then drop off and you never see them again is because they're just constantly dieting and they're not trying to work on improving their intake of calories. Um, you know, and ultimately my goal for Nadia is over time as we're working together, her off season continued to be progressive with food without increasing fat levels. That's really where we want to get to. Um, and I'm also very, very big on, you know, the, the femininity side of this. And, you know, you girls were created, like if we look at, if we take away the competing, like you girls were created to carry children and have fat levels to support carrying children and, and all that, all that comes with that. So I think it's important during an off season phase that you get to a part, you know, a point of stability. And then something else that Nadia mentioned that we're like really honing in on now is I think for women, especially y'all's inflammation markers are a lot higher typically than guys. Um, you guys are more, you guys respond more in terms of inflammation to training, whether it's a leg day, whether it's hit sessions. So 
within what we're doing, we are really prioritizing and paying close attention to her recovery because it's so, so crucially important. I can also talk about Ivana. She's another great example. Like she's at her best following rest days. Her look is best. She clears water. Um, and that's because both of these girls train so hard. So if you're truly training hard and you're kind of pushing the threshold in terms of your hit, you're pushing the threshold in terms of your cardio, mm -hmm. obviously during training, like you're going to have a higher inflammation response typically than what I would say the average male does, just because I think our body handles it a little bit better. So that's something else you really have to be cautious about. And if you guys are, or girls are going through phases where you feel like, you know, you're holding more water or um, you're not changing as fast as you are and, and you feel tired, like really make sure that you're implementing rest within that, that period of time. Um, also yeah, something I think is really, really important is that you have day. scheduled rest days. Yeah. You know, because that, that low I hit this morning was after the rest day. Go ahead. That low I hit this morning was after no cardio, no training yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have to, because like we as competitors, we're so mentally like locked in and, you know, it's, it's more, 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 more. And that's why I, I recommend that you sticking to a structured schedule with your rest days and your work days, because if you just continue to talk yourself into training, you're never going to have those rest days. So it's really important that you do that. That's something else that we've done with her um, that I think is, is yielding a lot of benefit. Like I know exactly when she's resting. I know exactly when she's training. It's never in question. And then we can also start to see the trends within her body because of that. Do you want to talk about like this week specifically? Yeah, this week, this week specifically was a bit tougher on me. Um, from like a recovery standpoint and output standpoint, um, my workouts were feeling a little bit more difficult. Um, I wasn't necessarily hungrier, but I could tell I was a bit more fatigued, a little bit more drained. And I keep that in mind with the fact that other variables outside of that are the same, like my sleep hasn't changed, my diet hasn't changed, my cardio is still the same, um, but I noticed my training uh, intensity was, it was a little bit more difficult to keep up with. And then um, I did, I trained legs and then I finished, the following day was a back day. And then I did my second hit session on the back day after I trained legs. And that just totally threw my recovery from that leg session out the window. I felt like I had just trained legs all over again. And the next day um, I just, I felt heavy as a log. Um, it, it just felt hard to keep that intensity, keep up with it and perform the same as I did earlier in the week when I was a bit more fresh. Um, Cause in my split, I have um, the last day is a leg day. And then I go into the beginning of my split day one being my back day and day two being my shoulders and day three, again, being that leg day. So by the time I get to that third leg day, I'm pretty toast. Um, right. That, that, um, that fourth day in the split, that leg day is, was pretty tough for me on Saturday. Um, but having- Okay, so just, just out, let's do this. Start to finish, starting with Sunday, lay out your week so that way people can kind of see what exactly that looks like. Okay, so- So in terms of your training. Okay, so for my training, let me pull it up. I actually have it written down. Just like what you're, what you're training on each day. Okay, yeah, I have it in my app here. Okay, so let's see, was this last week, was Monday the 31st, right? Yeah. Yeah, Monday yeah. Monday the 31st, okay. So Monday was a push day. Um, felt great, able to keep the same intensity. At that point, I wasn't feeling as worn yet because um, – that was only, Sunday being rest, right? Yeah. Sunday, yeah. Sunday was my back day after a rest day. So I was, I was pretty fresh. Um, and I didn't have rack pulls that week. I don't think, okay. so I, I don't think that I did those. I don't remember doing those. And then Tuesday after that push day was a rest day. So then going into Wednesday was a leg session and then that was the last day of the split. So then going into Thursday, again, was a back day. And then Friday was the push day. And then Saturday was that next leg day before I got to rest on Sunday. And I like to also get my cardio done 
as early in the week as I can. So I can allow for that full day off when it comes. Um, right. And I like to try and get my hit done too. I won't do it because I only have two sessions right now, or I had two sessions. Um, I wouldn't do them back to back, but I would usually just split them up and then um, try and do them as a warm up on my leg days. And then if I felt like um, I was able to perform better after a leg day, like on that back day, going into it, I felt fine. Um, and then afterward, walking up home, up the stairs, I was like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Didn't hurt me. Um, but that's that's just the intensity speaking too, because I going into it, if I knew that I was tired and I wasn't able to perform the intervals as intensely, I wouldn't have done the session. But I felt good enough beforehand to execute the intervals in a way that was going to be effective. Um, so that's why I did go ahead and do it then. But then after, right. um, it just affected me not so positively. Um, right. But after having that full day off Sunday, I feel a lot better. And I think a lot of people too, if they, they feel this like negative connotation between rest days and their weight. And a lot of people are afraid of um, their weight going up after a rest day. And like you said, if you're training hard enough, if you're putting the work in, in the gym and in your cardio, and um, you, you are going to have those inflammation markers being higher, you're going to need the rest and your body's going to thank you for it with progress and less. Than Absolutely. Minutes. Yeah. So we had a conversation just, I want to give you guys like the inside of that, but we had a conversation, I think it was Thursday or Friday. Mm -hmm. where she told me, you know, that she was really starting to feel more beat up. So when somebody's starting to feel beat up, I think, and I, and I know how she's training, it, it really comes down to just managing the, the fatigue ratio and the fatigue buildup during the week. So the first thing that I addressed with her was like, look, like I know we have this structured schedule, but if we need to put and you know, implement an extra rest day in there, especially between leg days, because I think this week she trained legs Wednesday and Saturday without a day off. Mm -hmm. in between so in terms of just her leg training she had enough rest but she didn't have a full rest day of training from one session to the next so going forward we're just going to really closely monitor that because a fatigue accumulation is a huge part of prep as you're going through prep you're getting more depleted um, your ability to recover is harder obviously you're adding more variables into play in terms of energy expenditure in terms of decreasing energy intake th through food so you got to really navigate this properly. And again, like we want to do this for you guys because I think it's so against the culture of like this work harder and, and it is, we work extremely hard, but it's also about navigating every variable to be as smart as you possibly can. So that was kind of step one is her and I having a conversation on Thursday or Friday of this week of saying like, look, like you really need to be aware of how much fatigue you have. And if we need an extra off day, like I trust your judgment to take it. Mm -hmm. And then today, when she updated me today, I honestly couldn't be happier with how her progress is going. Um, we'll talk about the food in a second too, but in terms of her progress, and then because of that conversation on Thursday or Friday, what I did today, and this is what I like to do with girls a lot. I like to start their prep off with HIT, And the reason why is because energy expenditure or, or calories are higher typically. I think it helps get the fat loss process going. But then as the prep goes on and the more depleted the athlete gets through prep, especially with females and talking about inflammation, which hit causes, I like to pull back. So because of her conversation that she had with me Thursday, I pulled back hit to one session and we're going to see what that does. And I'm going to probably quickly just cut it out completely because I think it's really got that fat loss ball rolling. That way we can now just kind of transition to steady state cardio. So I made a change because of that caloric expenditure and the effect that the hit has long term. I increased her daily cardio t 10 minutes a session, yeah, right? 10 minutes. 10 minutes a session. And then I just wanted to make sure that she was active for an extra thousand steps a day, which if you guys are tracking it, it's super easy to do. So just being a little bit more aware of that. Um, and to talk about steps really quick, why I calculate steps and why I track steps is because I think it's very common as an athlete gets more depleted that their daily energy expenditure through just normal activity starts to go down. Okay. So it's, to me, it's important that that stays a constant variable as best as you can. So that way, when you're making restrictions of food, if you're reducing calories from food, but then if on your end, if you're also reducing your energy expenditure, then it basically baselines out to the same thing. So keep your daily energy expenditure the same and then reduce the food and you should get a better result than kind of just teeter tottering them both down at the same time. So, that's why we did that. 
Um, and then that was it as far as changes this week. So I still haven't touched the food. And honestly, this is why I want to talk about the food, because I think that once you really find a sweet spot with a baseline diet, the, the most successful you can be in terms of changing is increasing the food through refeeds. So we started, your first refeed was when I was down in Florida, I believe, yeah. right? That Friday. Yeah. And then we did, we did that high day on that Friday. And um, right. I think I dropped, I did drop the day after. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, so that was what, three weeks ago, three, four yeah, weeks I ago. Think that was about a month ago, about a month ago. Yeah. About 150 grams of carbs more than I get on a base day. Right. And as far as you girls are concerned, I, I talked about this this past week, but for girls, I really like to kind of lessen the extreme. So I like to keep the baseline diet steady and then increase the refeed just slightly over that baseline diet. Whereas with men, I can push the baseline diet hot, harder, but then also increase the refeed higher. I feel like that works for them. But for women, I like to really kind of keep a stable balance. So we've done that now. This was the first week that we did it or second week that we did it two days in a row. Yeah, last weekend we did two days in a row. Um, right. I, I had a pretty significant drop after that first high day. And then we right. went out and did another one Saturday. Um, and then this weekend, Friday, we did a high day and then we did half a day high on Saturday. So I just took um, my meals, my first meal through my third meal before my training with the higher uh, calories. And then after my training, I shifted into what would be my base day. Right. Which is, that was your second leg day, right? That was my second leg day. Yep. Okay. So the reason why I did that. So again, we've done, we, we've kept the, the, the same last four, four weeks that we're talking about baseline diet's been the same two weeks in a row. We, we refed once a week. Last week we refed twice because she dropped a lot this week because of the, again, the conversation I keep bringing it up because it's important. So she talked about her recoveries was down. Um, she felt like her body was heavier. So we refed on Friday. Leg, leg day was again on Saturday, right? Yep. Yep. So because leg day was on Saturday, what I wanted to do is I didn't want to cause too much inflammation from giving her a lot of carbs again, but I wanted to give her enough carbs to fuel the workout. So I wanted to see the response of fueling the workout with the carbs, but then lowering the carbs after to not continue to increase a more watery environment to get kind of the truest response that we could out of the food. So this is, this process is working really, really well. Once you find that baseline diet and once your energy expenditure is high, which hers is, it was up to today. It was two hit sessions a week, 45 minutes of cardio, six times a week. Correct. Yeah. 45 yeah. times. Yep. And yep. I think we're yeah. doing so then there's a lot there. Okay. So yeah. um, a lot of people's approach at this point would be to pull, pull, pull. But once we have all these baseline variables established, my approach is to push the food up because I want to keep her body responsive long term. And if you are not pushing the food up, your metabolism is going to regulate to those low amount of calories. And then you're going to have to push the calories even lower or, or increase the energy expenditure. So that's really kind of in a nutshell where we're at right now. She was 135.2 this morning, six. Mm -hmm. Yep. 32, 135.2. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in my heart of hearts, I think we have 10, 11 pounds to go. Um, and, and I, and I think it's going to come, honestly, I think it's going to come pretty easy. We actually had a conversation because as she said at the start of her prep, things were not going well, like that, not that it wasn't going well, it was just hard. Yeah, um, and bumpy. I said, you, <laughs> what? It was very bumpy. Yeah. Yeah. So I said like, we might have to really, really push. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously she is pushing, but yet. Uh, I'm really happy to see the response that we're getting through increasing the calories, um, you know, when we can versus continuing to pull the calories. So this is, uh, this is where we're at today. Like I said, it's September 7th. Um, we want to give this to you guys every week. What I think is really important is that we're interacting with y'all's questions. So as you guys watch this video, please comment you know, questions and give us context to those questions. If you have specific questions about yourself, we're also going to be doing a and a segment. So I want to be able to answer those and address those um, and then go from there. And then last thing I want you to talk about, and this will end it after this is like, where are you at mentally? Um, where's your head at for the show? Like, seriously, just like lay it all out there. Okay. Well, I can get really into that. Um, 
Well, I'll rewind to last year after Junior USA and not continuing to pursue any competition after that, um, which looking back, I'm glad I didn't because I wouldn't have made the progress I have and I wouldn't be here now. Um, but I did feel watching the girls that I did beat in my class go pro, um, I did feel like I was kind of bench, just kind of like sat on the sidelines the rest of the year, even though I was having a really progressive off season, I got a lot done. I made a lot of progress. I, I felt um, just benched, you know, watching all these girls. There was a lot of what if going in my head, like what if I went to this show? What if I showed up here? Um, and then now after having prepped from December to May of this year with my shows being postponed, it was the same feeling again. So that's where mentally I was a little bit beat up and where having your support in that and your understanding in the beginning of when we started working together was really, really great. And just really appreciate that so much because you knew the toll that it had on me. And then now going into this show, into NPC Nationals, um, having that time between where I didn't keep pushing and keep running myself into the ground, um, I feel refreshed. I feel um, mentally just relaxed and calm and there's no anxiety in me regarding showing up in Miami in 10 and a half weeks. Um, it's, I'm, it's just a matter of me being ready to get up there and do what I love doing again. And um, just being grateful for everything not working out in the past. Yeah. Because that's what has led me to being in the position I'm in now. I don't think, I don't think that I've been in as good of a spot this many weeks out where I am now as far as the muscle Sorry. that I'm carrying, <laughs> as far as the muscle that I'm carrying, the progress I was able to make in those few months that we did have my food up and that I was able to train harder and then um, taking that same style of training, which has since changed since last year. Um, it's a lot different. I'm really enjoying it and um, taking that and using that in my prep with the same intensity and the same level of output and effort. Um, I think it's just really setting me up to have a really progressive prep. And like I said, there's not, there's not really much anxiety or worry or fear. There's no looking at other people. There's no comparing myself. It's just um, a matter of showing up at my very best. And I think we're going to do exactly that. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really, really uh, two things. I think it's important not to be delusional. Um, but within not being delusional, when you know you have a package that's worthy of a win, like speaking that into existence, you know, and that's, that's what we're doing, you know, like there's a lot of positivity within our prep. Um, there's also, you know, I, I believe that she can do this hundred um, percent. And that's something too, like, you know, just to kind of, for those of you guys that follow what Nick just did this past weekend, Nick's been telling me he was going to win this show since the day after USA's last year. Um, and we believed it, you know, now, now the, the challenge with bikini is bikini is not nearly as clean, clear cut as bodybuilding, you know? So with, with Nadia, what we have to do is just really just hone in on, on bringing her absolute best. Um, she works on a presentation all the time. Those of you girls that follow her on Instagram, like take notes, like she's 14, 16 weeks out and you're seeing her posing in a gym a lot and that's not to look at her or, or you know look at me it's because that's what she's doing because she's going to be the best pro that she can be mm -hmm. um and that starts at the amateur level so like i said guys in you know and girls and, and whoever is wanting to learn from this like um there's a lot of x's and o's that naughty is doing on a daily basis that we want to just display in this video um you know the interaction between us uh, athlete and coach um, where she's at mentally, you know, what we're actually doing in terms of variables, my mindset into adjusting those variables, how important her feedback is into my decision making process. So we're just going to continue just to lay this out for the next 10 and a half weeks. I'm going to be going down to Florida. I'm going to be moving there soon. And then we're going to be able to, do, be able to do a lot more things in person and then obviously like go into the show together. So this is going to be really, really cool. Hope you guys enjoy this and learn a lot from it. Um, and then we'll be back next week with more.